Hey, good evening everybody. Tonight I'm going to show you how to make pineapple habanero relish. Um, I saw this in a store and it was really good. And it's one of those things, you know, you just know one day you're never going to see it again. So I figured I'd try to duplicate the recipe and I hit it pretty close. Um, this is all stuff you can get easily with possibly the exception of habanero peppers, which believe it or not, I found in a grocery store. If you can't, use the hottest peppers you can find or else it just will come out too sweet. Um, I'm using xanthan gum for this. This is the trick. Uh, because if you use cornstarch as a thickener, it's just not going to come out the same when it's hot. Okay? And I am using yellow onions for this instead of sweet onions because we want to cut back on the sugar a bit. And the limes will help to balance it all out as well. Uh, if you don't have red peppers, you could use a green if you wanted to. Um, and for the pineapple, just get a medium, don't get something that's too big. So here's the list of ingredients. Oops, forgot to turn the camera on. Okay, so core the pineapple. If you haven't seen me do that in another video, I'll have to make another dish with pineapple to make up for that. Um, and if you haven't got a neat pineapple core like I do, just buy it pre-done out, out of the deli section. Most delis sell this ready to go. Actually, I take that back. I do have a pineapple video. I just remembered. And here is the link for it. So keep this standing up. And try to hold on to it. When it's this ripe, it's going to be really gushy and you are going to chop that up a bit more this is nearly falling apart but that's just fine overripe is far preferable than underripe for this so when it gets down to the bottom just cut it up and you do want to give this a rough chop because we're doing a relish and you want the pineapple to be in fairly small pieces that's about one tablespoon. I'm never overly precise with the butter. After the butter is melted and just starting to brown, toss in the pineapple. Now you do want the pineapple to caramelize. So once that's going, I would turn it down to medium while you do your chopping so it doesn't get out of control. And do keep an eye on it every few minutes. See how it's doing. Next, measure the vinegar into a bowl, sprinkle on the xanthan gum. You don't have to be so fussy about this as you were with the salad dressing um, because this is going to be cooking. And if there's a few lumps in here right now it doesn't really matter. So stir that up a little bit. If you've got any really big chunks you can try to press them out against the edge of the bowl. If it's all flat at the top like that just leave it. And then juice the limes into there. Okay, you can add the sugar to that now. And just stir that up and set it aside. Check on the pineapple. Yeah, it's starting to cook, but it hasn't caramelized yet. It is a bit at the edge, but that's it. Now, you've noticed I'm using my stainless steel for this today. Uh, usually I like the non-stick, but with the amount of acid and chili in this, I'd rather not take chances it's going to affect my pan. As usual, just cut the ends off. Yeah, I got organic today. And the price of that is they tend to go bad faster, but I don't really mind. It said small onions, so if I lose a layer, it's not a big deal. For the size onions I usually use, these are small. <laughs> so, cut them in fairly small pieces.
the pineapple is starting to smoke, not to worry. It's a great time to start the onions, which I just finished. And all of that is going to deglaze during the cooking process and just add a nice color and flavor to the relish. It's brown, not black. There is a big difference when it comes to cooking sugar. You just got to catch it right. So I'm going to put more butter in immediately, about the same amount. Swirl that around. When the pan is this hot, it should melt nearly immediately. Let that go. Grab your onions. Don't wait. You want to bring the heat down in the pan immediately. Get your salt and eyeball it for this kind of thing. And stir that up. The salt will help to bring the water out of the onions, which will in turn help to deglaze the pan. That's looking just nice. So turn that down a bit. Just let that sweat. Just red pepper first. So top off. And I missed this stage on one of my earlier recipes because the camera was gone. Okay, so just pull the core out like that with the seeds. Pull out the white pith that you can, then quarter it. And peel down the pith like that, cutting away from yourself. And since it is a relish, you want to cut the pepper in thin strips like this, then cut across like that. So you got nice little chunks. If you want this really uniform, don't do too many of these at once. It doesn't take that long to cut. Once the pepper is all chopped up, including the cup, just add that to the pan. Now give that a stir. And then chop up the habaneros. Now for this part, get gloves, okay? I can't stress this strongly enough. You will be very sorry if you don't use gloves. I know these look small, but these are, as far as I know, I think either the hottest or one of the hottest peppers known to man. Okay, so treat them with respect. If you cut these with your fingers and you get the juice on yourself and you touch your eyes, worst of all, or second worst, well, depending you might think it's the worst if you don't think and go to the washroom. Oh my. You are going to be jumping and burning for quite a while. So just cut the ends off. Cut them down the middle. Very important, remove any seeds and pith. That is the absolute hottest part and this stuff is hot enough as it is. So, and also careful not to cut through your gloves. Okay, so once all the bits or is the best you can get are off, chop these in little pieces, taking great care not to cut yourself or through the gloves. Cross cut that gently. You don't want to be going cowboy on this and have the juice jump up and catch you in the eye. I'm not even going to bother to carry the cutting board. And as soon as this is done, take the gloves off and wash your hands immediately. Oh, and here's a small trick to get rid of the nasty bits. What you do is you scrape up the cutting board and just carefully wipe the blade onto your hand. Make a fist around it and then take the glove off like that. One and two and you should get everything. So there's the hot peppers right there. Toss the pineapple back in. Any good caramelized bits that might have stuck. Stir up your liquid part. 
to get the sugar off the bottom of the bowl. Toss all that in. Turn your fan on. Do yourself a favor. You're going to have hot chili fumes and vinegar coming at you in a minute. And crank this up to high. So the secret to a really nice relish here is what you want to do is you want to boil off the liquid on high as opposed to have the peppers and onions cooking in here for a really long time because that way the relish will form and your peppers and your onions will still have a nice crispy consistency which I think is a step up over the bottled stuff but you can't really blame them it's been in the jar for like I don't know how long and I know this might seem like one of those don't take the radio into the bathtub warnings but don't be tempted to smell this so nearly all of the liquid has boiled off and there's still a little bit of caramel at the bottom I cheated and used a spoon my silicone wasn't taking it off and I wanted all that in there. So I'm going to zoom in quick and turn the heat down a bit. Now I know it's hard to see with all the steam, but that's one of the reasons the butter is in here. Because when you've got the butter in here, it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. Now, if this is already starting to look like a consistency of a relish that you would like to eat, stop now by all means. If you want the peppers and the onions a little more tender, turn the heat down and just let it simmer while keeping a very close eye on it. And I do recommend stirring nearly constantly with this because you won't know where you are if you just sit and look at it. You can nearly feel it with a spatula. And like any good relish, there's a tiny sort of bit of liquid but it's not runny and you can thank the xanthan gum for that if you look at relishes you buy at the store you will see that in nearly everything so you really should go get yourself some it just widens up the potential for the number of things you can do in the kitchen if you like to make sauces and whatnot yeah that's looking pretty well cooked I'm just gonna transfer that to a clean bowl so this is cooled off enough that I can take a spoon out just to show you the texture. See, this is oh, it's still steaming, still a little too hot, but as you can see, it makes a very nice relish texture. This is meant more as a savory relish. Um, I love this stuff on any kind of grilled meats, and I'll tell you, let's say steamed fish comes to mind. Um, or vegetables that <laughs> members of your family just won't eat throw a little spoon of this on it and they'll probably just gobble it up okay speaking of that I really do have to try this sorry oh my that is so good please try this Okay, thanks a lot. See you again.